Okay, now quickly, I just want to go over um, a problem in Excel, uh, covering a uh, chapter 10 problem in Excel. Uh, now, this is the problem that we just worked in the, uh, in the examples, uh, the Purple Haze Machine Shop problem. Uh, they are considering um, uh, improving their production efficient, efficiency by buying a new machine press. Uh, so we already solved this by hand. I want to show you what it looks like in Excel, and I want to show you this specifically because this should be a good template for uh, how to solve the Excel project. The Excel project looks really similar. The instructions are up here uh, for the problem. Please read the instructions really carefully. You can set up what you know about the problem in a timeline, just like we do um, in class. So we can set up the revenue for the problem, the investment uh, in the fixed assets, which is the machine press, the salvage value that we uh, are going to get when we sell it at the end of the project, the networking capital requirement, uh, the tax rate and the years of depreciation. Then we can set up our pro forma income statement uh, to solve for cash flow from uh, or operating cash flow here called cash flow from operations, uh, revenue minus depreciation, and we calculate depreciation on the five year depreciation schedule. So I do it off to the side here. Uh, you can see the formula that I'm using, which is the uh, cost basis of the asset, the investment times the depreciation percentage per year for makers. Right. Now everything here, as you can see, is uh, formula based and that's one of the requirements for the Excel project. You must calculate everything uh, according to a formula uh, and you must do it in Excel. So you can't solve any of this uh, on a piece of paper with a calculator and then just type it into Excel. That's what hard coding means and you're not allowed to hard code. Uh, the only thing that you could do, for instance, is you don't necessarily have to type the revenue up here and then set the revenue equal to a cell. You could enter the, the revenue directly. Uh, but anything that needs to be calculated like depreciation uh, or EBIT uh, needs to be done in Excel. Um, so revenue minus depreciation gives me EBIT uh, EBIT minus taxes gives me net income, and here I just did that in one step. Right? So EBIT times 1 minus the tax rate gives me net income. In the Excel project, you'll have a separate row for taxes, and so you can just do it directly there. Operating cash flow is EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. Um, however, if you'll notice from the slides and from the, um, you can go back and check that when there's no interest, uh, net income plus depreciation is the same thing as EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes, because EBIT minus taxes gives me net income, and then add depreciation back. So this is the same equivalent here. Then we can plug in our total networking capital. This is the networking capital requirement. And notice that's increasing by 2500 a year, as the problem states. And we can calculate our change in networking capital as the difference between this year's networking capital and last year. And notice in this first year's year, last year doesn't exist, but in all the next ones, it's this year minus last year. That gives us our change in networking capital. Our cash flow from investment, this is our net capital spending, uh, and this is the cost of the fixed asset and then the sale price. And remember, the sale price is the after-tax salvage value, which again, I calculate off to the side here. Uh, and then cash flow from assets, this is total cash flow down here, is operating cash flow minus the change, and remember this is a negative change, so this is plus, minus the change in net capital spending, again a negative change, so a plus, and here I already passed that through so that I could just sum the, the, the columns, and, and that's of course not necessary. Uh, then I calculate internal rate of return using the IRR formula. I calculate NPV using the net present value formula. And notice that there's something unusual about net present value here. And that is that you don't include the initial cost inside the NPV formula. You add it back outside the NPV formula. Uh, and if you, uh, if you are new to Excel, you can always look up the requirements. You can start looking up any formula by just typing equals. That gives you access to all Excel's formula. Then I tend to start just by looking for the name of what I'm trying to do. So here we're trying to do net present value. So I type in and I see all of the formulas that start with N in Excel, NPV, 
and p gives me number of periods, this is how I would solve for uh, number of periods like the n on your calculator. Um, but I want MPV, so I hit MPV, and now I've got the returns the net present value of an investment based on a discount rate and a series of future payments. To start the formula, I press, I open the uh, the bracket, I open the parentheses, and now I have the net present value formula with the required inputs, and it says rate, comma, values. And if I click on MPV, notice that this is highlightable. If I click on this, this brings up the Excel help function. And the help files in Excel are actually really, really helpful. Uh, and they're pretty, uh, they're pretty dense. They're, they're, they're almost like a textbook. So it tells you first what the syntax of the, of the formula is. In other words, what needs to go in the formula. And then it gives some remarks on what net present value is, including the actual mathematical formula for net present value. Um, and then it gives some examples about how to solve for net present value. And, uh, and notice that down here at the bottom, it says that we need to add the cost of the investment outside of the formula. Okay. So we can go and look at the help files for any function. Um, so I, that's how I'm going to figure out how to use the, the different formulas. If I'm new to Excel, of course, you can always just YouTube or, or Google how to do MPV in Excel, and, and I'm sure there are tons of videos there. Um, then a secondary problem down here, which is just like the secondary problem in your Excel project, just given a set of cash flows, find the net present value and the internal rate of return. And uh, this is something that you can are allowed to hard code in the uh, in the Excel project, whether you accept it or reject it. But if you're interested and you want to learn more about Excel, and you should if you want to get a job, uh, you can learn a little bit more. This is called the if function, and this uh, tell this automates the process. It says if the net present value is greater than zero, accept. If it's less than zero, reject. And again, you can look at the help files for the if function uh, to help you figure it out. So this is how I expect, uh, in general, again, it's not an exact replica, uh, but this is how, in general, I expect the, uh, the Excel project to look like. Uh, and what I'll most stringently be grading on here is uh, whether you did everything in Excel using Excel files and, and functions um, rather than uh, whether you got the answer right. Because I know you can get the answer right. That We can do that by hand. You can follow along the examples. Um, and hopefully with this example, you can get the Excel project right, too. Um, my expectation is not for this to be a, a really hard and heinous project. Um, rather, my expectation is to give everyone a primer in Excel if you haven't had one already. Uh, and if you have had one, then great. This should be a pretty easy project for you. Um, but those of you that haven't had any Excel, uh, the time is now to start. Uh, there's lots of Excel help out there. Microsoft has some free Excel classes online that you can take. Um, if you got some free time to burn, uh, I highly recommend that. Uh, there is no greater skill to have on the on the initial job market than Excel skills. Uh, okay, good luck.